Pay close attention. The news you are about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you the news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. Well, COVID-19 pretty much dominating our news here today. Um, more and more things keep coming out about this deadly virus. Uh, minorities now seem to be uh, uh, being hit especially hard. Right. We'll have those details as well as the uh, meat market in Wuhan, China, where scientists now believe the virus did originate mm -hmm. um, coming from the details of those that came there and uh, so many of them were sick as they came out of that market. Mm -hmm. Also, one country, Ecuador, and their um, rough situation there with not knowing where to put the bodies, actually mm. bringing in refrigerator trucks to store them until they could get them buried. And that's just uh, some of the news stories here this evening. But first, we're going to look at a perspective of a doctor working inside a New York hospital who gives us a glimpse of the turmoil these medical personnel are facing on a daily basis. Dr. Evelina Graver works at North Shore University Hospital at Manhasset, New York, and uh, uh, documented parts of her day on a video and shared with CBS Local News. Now, she's treating some of the most serious COVID-19 patients at North Shore and described the last 10 days as some of the saddest and most harrowing in all of her 15 years practicing medicine. Hmm. Now, Dr. Graver describes the last 10 days as heart-wrenching. She spends 12 to 16 hours inside a COVID-19 unit with patients who are all on ventilators, seriously ill. She said, you walk in and it's hard for me to say, but you can actually smell fear. You smell death. Uh, there's another feeling in the air, one she has never faced before, the feeling of helplessness. There is not much uh, that her or her colleagues can do for the patients on their unit. Now, half of her patients are much younger than 60 years old and just a few days earlier showed no signs of any health problems. Dr. Graver says the real picture is that the disease is way more severe than anybody could actually imagine. Now, the seasoned doctor says she does cry, allowing herself to feel the gravity of the situation. Mm -hmm. Well, thinking about her 12-year-old daughter helps her get through each day, but it's also a weight on her mind. She explains, there's a fine line where you want to be able to put your life on the line to, and protect, but at the same time, knowing that what you could be doing inside, you're bringing home with you and you could infect your loved ones. Dr. Graver re-wears her PPE, which is the personal protective equipment, like so many on the front lines. Now, normally these things would be thrown away, but she has no choice. Her hospital does not have enough uh, to do that right now uh, for them to keep uh, mm -hmm. throwing them away and keep using and, right. and uh, getting some new ones. They have to reuse them. It's their only option. Now, she takes all the precautions she can to stay safe while caring for people who have been struck by this deadly disease, but the emotional toll is apparent. Well, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the toll that this uh, COVID-19 is also taking on the country of Ecuador and them not able to take care of the dead, that is, bury them in a proper way. And in fact, it's so bad there right now that the dead are piling up. Let's take a look at this next video. Lejos del fallecido, lejos Napoleón Merchanga Larza. Ocho días aquí, señores. 
Tengo la orden de retiro, pero de Aguacino no nos no quieren dar. Todos los días nos dicen, esperen, esperen, ya estamos cansados de esperar. Nadie nos ayuda. Cuando yo llamaba al 911, me decían, ¿sabe qué? El día de hoy no vamos a poder retirarlo, no vamos a poder retirar al día siguiente porque el día de hoy hay 50 muertos. El día siguiente llamo y me dice, el día de hoy hay 70 muertos y no podemos retirar a tu papá. Son los olores que emana el cadáver, señor, es el que no, ya no se resiste. Y también hay vecindad en donde tenemos personas de mayor edad. Yo tengo a mi madre de 80 años que también está con problemas respiratorios. Y estamos así a, a, preocupados igual que ellos porque imagínense, va a tener que sacar el cadáver acá al, al portal o a la calle. tough situation there. It reminds me of some of the videos we saw in uh, Syria where they had mm -hmm. the same thing taking place where they couldn't escape the smell right. of the dead bodies permeating the air. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just hospitals that are feeling the strain across the country, but nursing homes are seeing an alarming rise in coronavirus cases as well. Over half in New Jersey have at least one case. Now in Missouri, nursing homes uh, there have three patients that have died, and in Richmond, Virginia, 33 have died so far. Now in Southern California, there is one uh, emergency evacuation of a nursing home taking place. A Riverside, California uh, facility is evacuating over 80 patients. Uh, this is the system at its breaking point. After 39 cases of coronavirus at a home nursing uh, ref nurses, excuse me, refused to show up for work, presumably fearing for their own safety. Uh, Jose Arbayo Jr., a Riverside County public health official, commented to the local news media saying, I think their fear might have led them to make a decision that might not have been the right decision for their patients. But this is an all too familiar scene that we are seeing spread both on the West and East Coast. Now, Pat McGinnis, of California Advocates for Nursing Home Reform says, people are terrified, people just don't know what to do. It's very distressing to family members. Mm. Now LA County is encouraging families to consider moving their loved ones somewhere else. However, that poses a different challenge as many people are not equipped to take care of their elderly at home. And to make matters worse, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find those willing to work at nursing homes and assisted living centers. Well, this is a tragedy all around. Patients can't see their families. Staff say that without the protective gear, they're getting sick and now homes are being evacuated. For this nursing home, the process of taking one patient out at a time could take all night to finish. Hmm. Well, uh, our field correspondent, Larry McGee, has uh, the latest report on Europe where the death toll has reached above 50,000. Larry, what do you have for the latest update on that? 
Though the plague of the moment and its emotional intensity is yet to subside, there are already reports of worse pestilences looming on the near horizon, and that is a hard thing for many to imagine considering the carnage of thousands already heaped up on either side by the coronavirus. That number is 50,000 in Europe to be exact, with the lion's share of those casualties coming from the home of Rome. At a recent press conference of European leaders held behind protective glass, Austria's Chancellor Sebastian Kurz spoke with reporters about the role the progress of the virus would play in determining whether or not the Christian nation could hold its usual festivities to Ishtar, which is also known as Easter. Spain, who reports being hit with the plague in the last part of the first Roman month, is said to be hopeful now as the fifth Roman month approaches and its numbers of daily dead and those newly infected is reported to be dropping. Numbers in the U.S., however, are still climbing, with New York State topping the list at a record-breaking 779 deaths in just one day. Confirmed infections in the U.S. are now sprinting towards a half million, with over 14,000 having collapsed into the cold embrace of death so far. While experts are beginning to suspect that the starter calamity will peak sooner than expected, the mayor of New York is cautioning against letting one's guard down too soon. Hospitals in Michigan are reported to be mere days away from running out of the critical equipment used to guard healthcare personnel from infection. The state's mayor says that their resources are already taxed and they have yet to even hit their expected apex. For YPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Katanja, back to you. Katana, looks like the Michigan, Michigan governor is running into the same problem the other states are having, mm -hmm. not finding enough of the personal protective equipment for their staff to act to uh, treat effectively yeah. the patients coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, the coronavirus is putting a strain on all the nation's resources. The unemployment rate is hitting everyone hard, but minorities are being hit especially hard at more than 10 million Americans now out of work. Well, people are lining up for miles, disregarding social distancing guidelines for an opportunity to put some food on the table as uh, and at local food banks where they work tirelessly to actually try to hand out food to those in need. Mm -hmm. Now, to top it all off, more than 80% of Americans feel that things will only get worse. Wow. Well, at a uh, food pantry in Fort Lauderdale and also uh, one in Pittsburgh, there were extremely long lines stretching for miles. Authorities are reporting that black and brown people are being hit especially hard from not only the virus, but also unemployment. Dr. Fauci said in a press briefing, he said, uh, we've known for years diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, obesity and asthma are disproportionately affecting the minority population, particularly the African Americans. Well, food pantries across the country are filling those lines of people with both hope and thanks. Now, regarding COVID-19 and what many have wondered what the cure for the virus is, Yeshua Hawkins of the House of Yahweh has revealed in advance what the prophecies in the Holy Scriptures show regarding how long this first of seven plagues is prophesied to last five moons. Now take a look at this timeline video for a better understanding. Make no mistake, this is though an emergency in China. Make no mistake, this is though an emergency in China. 
but it has not yet become a global health emergency. It may yet become one. their lives. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Tens of thousands of people left Wuhan, China this morning for the first time in two and a half months. China's government just lifted travel restrictions on the city where the worldwide coronavirus outbreak began. Remy Innocencio shows us a region possibly on the rebound. At the stroke of midnight, Wuhan celebrated liberation from its 76-day lockdown, honoring its frontline workers in a light show. Drivers sped off as highways reopened and high-speed trains departed just after dawn. Along city streets, cherry trees are now blossoming as shoppers return to reopen stores, a stark contrast to a city that just days ago was under one of the largest lockdowns in history. CBS News was the first U.S. news network to report from Wuhan in January. Our team evacuated just before the city went into confinement, a measure that grew to more than 60 million people across China. Emergency hospitals sprung up almost overnight, and empty streets were the new normal. Those who disobeyed containment were beaten, hauled away, or sealed in their homes by authorities. 21-year-old Megan Monroe has been in Wuhan since the lockdown began. Everyone's like out and about and everyone was just so, so happy. I felt joy in the air. But epidemiologists like Ben Cowling warned that widespread travel out of Wuhan could mark the start of China's second wave. Could mark the start of China's second wave. Could mark the start of China's second wave. One of my concerns is that we're going to get into a nasty cycle of having to have repeated lockdowns maybe every two or three months because there'll be a resurgence in infections. Well, it's interesting how that's uh, uh, apparently detailed in the Holy Scripture showing that five moons is the amount of time that this plague will last. And of course, China is starting to see somewhat of a light at the end of the tunnel. Right, actually, actually celebrating their uh, victory, as they're saying, or mm -hmm. claiming over the virus. And then you see that other countries um, namely the United States have followed. They were a month and a half or two months mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. roughly. So they're actually still in that right. five month time frame. So mm -hmm. interesting to see how uh, that will go for them as well. Yeah, and you're seeing a lot of the countries now that are starting to see the death rates actually mm -hmm. uh, plateauing and starting to decrease. Even though there are still a lot of people infected and sick, the numbers are starting to decrease. So falls right in line. Well, China was the first to report the virus and they, uh, unsurprisingly, are starting to, like we said, see the light at the end of the tunnel as it starts to become business as usual once again for the time being. Authorities believe that the coronavirus might have originated from a market in Wuhan, China, where wild game meats were sold for human consumption. Now, a writer for the New York Times, Stanley Meyer, spoke to CBS News regarding the regarding the virus's origination and subsequent spread. Now he said in December people were showing up to hospitals with pneumonia like illness and but wouldn't respond to treatment and what they found was that a lot of those people were from that particular market in Wuhan where there were these live animals that were being sold. Mm -hmm. He continued, uh, that was the first signal that there was an epidemic emanating from one spot. 
Once that was figured out, they tracked it back to a virus that's been exposed to humans before from bats. Of course, he said, uh, like the SARS virus from 17 years ago, which was in bats, it jumped to mammals and then from mammals to humans. Uh, once the authorities realized there were so many victims from one market, it was shut down on New Year's Day and uh, it was disinfected and they began to investigate the link that the virus came from bats and transmitted through some other animals that was sold at that same market. Well, in China, as they are on a road to recovery, now closing a temporary hospital that treated over 12,000 patients, those former patients expressed their gratitude in a symbolic ceremony where the medical staff was praised for their work. Wu Chang Temporary Hospital was the first to open and the last to close. And I know that uh, we reported previously that uh, that was one of uh, several temporary hospitals that uh, they got to work to building in a short period of time because the numbers of people who were coming in with these symptoms of coronavirus was so fast that they were overwhelming their current medical system. So at this point, we see them closing those uh, same hospitals. Well, the fear of some is that there will be a second wave of infections that will create an even bigger problem, driving not only the health of mankind, but international commerce into an unrecoverable pit. Well, Joshua Hawkins of the House of Yahweh is yet again warning mankind of what the prophecies show for this time period and who can be protected from what's to come. If you'd like to learn more what you can do for yourself and your family, contact the House of Yahweh. Uh, when you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter. Here's how. You can contact the House Yahweh by writing them at The House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas, 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them on any of their websites. You can go to Yahweh.com, YeshraHawkins.com, or Yahweh's Branch.com. You can also visit us by going to ypnnews.com. If you would like to email the House of Yahweh, you can do so by emailing info at yahweh.com. For any international calls, you can call the number that's on your screen now. And lastly, please check out the Yisrael Says program by going to yisraelsays.com and the Ask Yisrael program by going to askyisrael.com. Well, don't go anywhere just yet. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins bringing you more information on concerning the prophecies and what you can do to prepare and save your family and have the shadow of protection that's actually shown in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, from all of us here at YPN News, I'm Katan Alexander. And I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. Thank you for watching. Yeah.